What's up everyone, it's Jordan, and I am so excited to be showing you guys this tank right now. Um, it's not technically 100% done, but um, I just couldn't, like I just couldn't sit here and not make a video about it yet, so. Um, but it's, you know, it's like 95% done, so. Anyway, uh, if you've watched a few of my Planet Tank videos, um, first of all, you'll notice that this tank looks very different and uh, I'll overlay some pictures of what it used to look like in case you're uh, a new um, you know, watcher. In a lot of my videos I've talked about how I wanted to rescape it and do something you know totally different and uh, I tried you know some different um, aquascapes as far as just rearranging plants and changing out um, the types of plants but I had never actually gone and bought driftwood and in my last video I talked about how I went to a place called Aquarium Co-op, which I'm sure a lot of you know the name just from watching YouTube videos, but they were having a 25% off sale on um, this Manzanita Driftwood. I thought, you know what, like this is, <laughs> this is meant to be. So I bought like six pieces of it and uh, it was a nightmare coming home though because you know my, my tank was so heavily planted that I really couldn't put the driftwood in the way it was. So I was like, okay, I know I'm gonna have to do something like drastic here. And uh, I ripped out all the plants except for the, uh, the micro sword, just because of how, you know, how heavily that's, uh, you know, rooted into the substrate. But, and you know, I, I knew I wanted to keep that. Um, but I ripped everything out, which, you know, for like the first three hours, my tank was just a huge cloud of just dust. Um, primarily due to the fact that, you know, I don't uh, uh, clean the substrate ever. So uh, as soon as you uproot something, it's just, you know, letting all of that um, fish waste up into the, the water uh, column. So uh, after things died down for a little bit, um, that's really when I went to work, you know, I'm trying to figure out how I wanted to do the driftwood or whatever. And I tried a lot of like horizontal, um, you know, layouts. And because these are six pieces, it's not just like you just, you know, plop it in there and it's it's good to go. I mean, um, it was kind of like stressing me out trying to figure out like how to place them when I was taking them in and out and moving them around and doing all this kind of stuff. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I think I have an idea. And I was like, what if I were to do something kind of like a tree? And so I actually took one of my wife's um, hair ties and I just uh, took all the pieces and just held them together like this and kind of shifted some pieces around and moved around and I was like, I think this looks really cool. Uh, and so I was like, I'm just gonna try it. And so I grabbed one of her hair ties and just slipped it over all of the, like the, you know, the bottoms of the pieces and I just shoved it in there. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I think I did it. <laughs> like first try pretty much, well first try as far as like the, the tree. Um, I had already tried numerous other layouts, just, you know, laying them down on their side. And, uh, you know, it just, I don't know, it just kind of like popped. And uh, so I immediately, I was like, okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. So I'm, I, you know, I'm leaving the micro sword carpeting. Let me move this over here, uh, get a little bit closer, I guess. And there we go. And so I was like, I'm just gonna plant all my plants around like the base of it and just, it'll give it like a really cool, like shrub, you know, kind of look. I was like, I don't really know what to call this other than just like a tree with some shrubs around it. Um, but up here in the front, I have the, the hygro fern, which is just exploding in growth. Um, and I think it's going to make a really cool sort of centerpiece um, when it starts to uh, fill in um, some more. Let me get a little bit closer there. You can see that it's got a really unique um, just texture and color. And as far as how the leaves are, I guess, like serrated, I guess that's what you call it. Um, I have the... AR, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, like Althorinus Ricky or something like that. The AR, pretty sure it's mini over there, looking really cool. Um, move over here, sorry my filter. Uh, my, you know, there's still lots of floating stuff in the water and it's all, you know, my filter's doing its job and it's collecting it all over there, so excuse that. So then in the back over here, you have Cypherus Helfiri. It's a really cool grass-like plant. Um, it grows slow, which is nice, and that's one of the things that I talked about in my other videos. Like, I'm just so done trimming plants. Like, just that's all I did was trim, trim, trim. You know, uproot, replant, 
And I just, you know, these take a long time to grow, even with CO2 ferts and bright lights. And I, I like that. And it'll look really cool as it grows up and, and leans over. Uh, and then pretty much all I have after that in the back is just my Java fern. Now the Java fern, I kid you not, once I pulled it out, um, was probably like a foot in, not diameter, well, I would say actually pretty close to a foot in diameter, just it wasn't a perfect uh, circle. And I'm not even joking, I bought that as like one leaf from Petco almost two years ago. Like I'm not even joking, it was like, a, like a like, oh maybe it was like two or three stems like held together with some thread. And a, no joke, it was like three, three leaves. And now it's like a foot long. So I separated all that into like a bunch of different pieces just to like encourage, you know, new healthy growth. And I just, you know, just shoved it in places all behind there. And then the last thing that I picked up from a friend actually was some uh, Java moss. And I, I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. It seems to be staying, which is pretty cool. Um, you can see it up there, there, and then over there. And I didn't use any sort of fishing line or thread or whatever. I just sort of like just grabbed it and just shoved it in place and just wrapped it around the branch the best I could. And it's staying. Um, it's not clogging up my filter, so it's kind of working, but I'm not sure how that'll work in the long term. Um, and then the only real issue that I'm running into is uh, because, here let me pick this up a little bit. You can see um, a couple pieces of the manzanita driftwood stick up out of the water or come very close to the top. And the only issue that I'm having is just with the frog bit. Um, you know, I do have a pretty good current <clears throat> going throughout the tank and the frog bit because it, you know, it spins around and around the top the roots are getting caught on the branches, so they're not really um, moving around as much and they're just staying in one place, which is technically fine for the frog bit. Um, I just don't want, you know, like a permanent shady area um, in the tank because whatever plant is getting the light obstructed is not gonna grow as well. And that's why I like it to, you know, uh, circle around on the top. So I'll just have to figure something out with that or maybe it'll just be something I live with. Um, but this tank, you know, like I said, if you've been watching my videos, I've been wanting to do something like this for like two years and I just couldn't commit, I was never ready, could never find the right pieces of driftwood and I'm just so happy that it's coming together. And um, you know, it's just, so, it's just so nice that in the last week since I've had it set up, I haven't had to do any real maintenance other than just kind of cleaning up the tank and, you know, cleaning the glass and just, uh, just basic maintenance. Um, not like getting in there, uh, you know, with the water up to like almost my armpit, like getting in there, like, you know, snipping things here and there. And it was just, it was a nightmare um, how much maintenance the tank required and especially just to make that video once a week or whatever or take that picture once a week and post it online I was like what am I doing you know investing five hours of maintenance into this tank um, and especially more importantly um, when I go on deployments this tank has to be really easy for my wife to take care of and I feel like I've just made it significantly more beautiful and significantly easier to take care of so then the last thing that I'm gonna to touch on is you can just see, uh, I bought that Archea or whatever CO2 diffuser. Um, the thing is still kicking butt. Um, obviously I've only had it for like two weeks, so it's not a real long-term review, but the other one, the U-Barn broke in like five days. So <laughs> obviously it's, it's significantly better of a product. Um, you can just see the huge stream of micro bubbles coming out of that uh, and then, move this up <clears throat> I have both uh, my canister return and my little power head uh, aimed coming this way so it's just causing the co2 bubbles to just kind of swirl around and disperse the tank and some people don't like that I really don't mind it um, you know down the road I might get like an inline diffuser or whatever but uh, that's working pretty well and like I said, I don't mind the way it looks. So anyway, I would really love to hear what you guys think of this Aquascape. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. 
Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below and I pretty much respond to everyone. And if you want to see more videos about my tanks, both saltwater and freshwater, hit the subscribe button because I'll be making more videos about them coming up soon. And I will see you next time.